Hot is presented by Botano. The game starts now. Here are your hosts, Brent Wallace, Jason York, and Bobby Ryan. Hello, everybody. Brent Wallace alongside Jason York and Bobby Ryan. Gentlemen, an exciting show today lined up. Uh, I've kept you in the dark for most of it. I will tell you that the Sense Spelling Bee is back, so I hope that you've brought your pencils to try and figure this out. However, uh, before we begin, Bobby, I just thought maybe you could uh, update us on Sense ownership. <laughs> I just I just read a tweet five minutes ago that uh, I, I have no clue who that person is, but uh, Steve Apostopoulos uh, yeah. uh, is, is going to be the guy. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah? So I have no idea. I, I, I will say, uh, way back uh, in January of last year, there were a lot. We were figuring out who's out there that would put money towards possibly buying the franchise. There was lots of names circling. Of course, Ann Lauer was always out there. Uh, this gentleman was also part of that uh, rumor mill at that time too. So it's not a shock that he's involved. Uh, he's kept it just pretty quiet. So uh, maybe he's got he's got like six billion dollars just kicking around. So. Maybe <laughs> just a couple bucks. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> well, well, the, well, well, the report was they, they were going to he Steve and his brother were going to buy the Washington Redskins. So, yes, like there's rich commanders and there's and there's wealthy. Like did I say Redskins. Oh, boy, I'm going to get canceled. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, Washington but, football. Yeah, team. Th yeah. Um, Steve and his brothers have deep, deep pockets, huge hockey fans. I would not count them. I would. Bob's on to something here, man. Even though it's just a little tweet there, deep pockets, um, and uh, you know, we'll see. It's going to get real interesting here in the next, uh, hopefully, next few days. Fingers oh crossed. <laughs> Instead of next few already, weeks. Please. Yeah, yeah. Right. Let's uh, let's get the, it over. This with. feels longer than that Carolina Florida overtime game. Um, gentlemen, <laughs> uh, speaking of Florida, uh, they are off to the Stanley Cup final in quick fashion. I'm listen. I won't say are you surprised, but clearly, this is a, a well-built hockey team that's, if not for Sergei Bobrovsky, may not be having the success they're having. Is that fair, Yorkie? Um, well, number one, I, I, as as great as Bobrovsky's played, Matthew Kachuk's still the Conn Smythe Trophy in my opinion. Like, come on, like back-to-back yeah. -back game winners, walk-offs. I know Bobrovsky's been brilliant, um, but listen, they've they've been timely. They've been very timely, and what I mean by that is when they get their opportunities, they they seem to cash in at the right time, uh, at the most important time. And the other thing about Florida, they might get outshot because if you if you look at the shot schematics in a game, it's like wow, they're getting outplayed, but they don't give. They rarely give secondary opportunities on rebounds. Like their D. You, you look at their D, they're big, they're long, and, and the smallest guy is a pit bull back there, Gudis. They don't let you get around yeah. goal. They don't let Bobrovsky have to see. First of all, he's seeing most of the shots, and they uh, they don't give a lot of secondary opportunities. They're just playing really smart. And um, I forget who tweeted this out. I think it was uh, – I'll give Mike Kelly some props. I saw a tweet yesterday from Mike Kelly, and he – put it in layman's terms what's why florida is having the sex success they're having right now it's because they don't beat themselves and by doing that they don't turn the pucks over in bad parts of the of, of uh of the zones like the blue lines they just manage the game extremely well they get, get great goaltending they have long d and they've got guys that score timely goals so that's a pretty good recipe yeah you said it before they made the playoffs too. You you were the one. You said that this is a dark horse team that could go, yeah, that could go off because they were building at the right time. Um, I like the way they're structured. I, I they just mechanically sound all the way through. Um, I, I I like that every line can give you a little bit of a different look. Um, but I yeah, Matthew Kachuk's playing. Say what you want about Bob, he's playing great hockey. But um, Matthew Kachuk is the runaway Conn Smythe Trophy winner for me anyway. <laughs> So, Bob, like, one last thing on Florida here. Being a former defenseman, I'm a big believer in, I, I know analytics say when you dump the puck in, you're giving up possession. But the one thing that analytics don't tell you is it's like a boxing match. 
early in a game, when you continually chip pucks in on defensemen, I call them body blows. So it's just like the beginning of a, a boxing match, similar to the beginning of a hockey match. You get it in on the yeah. D and you just body blow, body blow. By the by, by the third period, it, it always pays off. And and that's what that's Florida right now is dumping the puck in more than any team in the NHL. And they're getting it back because they're built that way too. Like you and I, Bob and Wally were talking about Sam Bennett before the show today. Like, imagine if I'm yeah. a D, he saw he soft chips on me. I gotta turn and get it. I'm probably slowing down so he doesn't nail me. <laughs> and then it's then it's a 50-50 battle. And then Florida's forecheck is just so good. They're on you like pit bulls. I just love I, I agree, yeah. I love how they're built. I love how they're built. They got so many guys that outwill you. They outwill you yeah. every shift because they just they've just got that intestinal fortitude. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And that yeah, you you've arrived at uh a lot of puck second, eh? <laughs> so I don't blame I don't blame a lot of defensemen right now doing the same exact thing. Uh speaking of Sam Bennett, what do we think of the hit? Now I'm not saying that it's not clean. It's a very clean hit. I'm just, are you, I'm shocked that this late in the game or late in the season that this happens. Am I wrong here? Man, what a hit. Um, no, I don't know. I, it's a, it, there's nothing wrong with that hit. He, everything is together. Um, and, and, you know, Slavin's kind of leaving, leading with his face here. It's, 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 that's a playoff hockey hit. It's a great hockey hit. Um, I hate it for the player and I hope Slavin's okay. But at the same time, you, you can't, you can't fault that hit uh, one bit. I'm yeah, just like shocked you didn't and, see him. Yeah. That, yeah, well, it's, all, it's, all, it's, yeah. It's so fast, you know, so fast. But yeah, he's, yeah. I mean, he's of all guys taking, too, taking Bob, a bit of a nap. If all, <laughs> if all guys too, like Jacob's Jacob Slavin, one of the most self-aware defensemen in the game, like arguably one of the best two-way defensemen in the game right now. Yep. But yeah, you know, would I? I wouldn't even say that it's a predatory hit. It's because he doesn't really charge him. He's just S Sam Bennett's. Look how he's loading his body for that hit. Like l lowers yeah. the boom and comes up, but there's no elbow. It's not a charge. It, to me, it's just a defenseman that. Again, I say this all the time. You need to know who's on the ice when you're on the ice. Like you yeah. got to go through. And I, listen, I'm what I'm slaving is a much better player than I ever was. But he's, I'm, I'm sure he knows who's on the ice. It's just a mistake. He made a mistake. He let down yeah. his guard. Puck bobbled. Looked down. Wrong time. Wrong place. Wrong guy. And you're knocked out. Exactly. Down. And well, from what I heard too, slave. Slave. Slavin was eating a pizza pizza after the game in the dressing room was what the report was and he was fine. But man, that's one of the, you know what the thing is too? We're so used to not seeing big hits in the game like that anymore. Then when we see one, it's like, Oh, oh so, something's going to be wrong here. It's going to say, yeah, that's shocking not, all. That's, right. That's, <laughs> yep. that's not allowed. Yeah. Same with Truba. Yeah. The Truba. Yeah. 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 Same thing. It, it's a great, it's a great hockey hit. It's a great hit. And I, I'm sure that, Slavin will be the first person to tell you he got caught with his head down. It just it's, yeah. it's the way it goes, and it, it's so fast, and you can't fault the you can't fault the guy that threw the hit um, one bit. He, he I mean he coasted it for five five six strides on the way in, so you know there was more than enough time to know who's coming. That's the wrong guy. That's the wrong guy to not be aware of when he's on the ice because yeah. there's really when you when you look at the game right now, there's very few guys that are going to blow you up in a shift. And I always made sure, like, you know, it was a great example, Bob. Remember Jordan Tutu? Tutu, yeah. if if you if you were playing against Jordan Tutu, you had to know when he was on the ice at all times because that type of hit, he'd make four or five of those a game, and he'd hurt you. Yeah, and that and then you want to fight? Yeah. He'll fight you after two. <laughs> yeah, little, yeah, that's the other thing. It's like the oh. You're not going to get up and defend yourself because Bennett's going to beat the wheels off you too. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. look, Chris, Chris yeah. Neal, he did it. Yeah, like always. He, I remember he's caught guys, and I know we have the video, Alex. If you want to play it, caught guys coming around the net. I, he took Victor Hedman out of a game. Uh, this isn't the Hedman one, oh. but he just oh. he would get guys. Yeah, I, I yeah. think the Hedman one is coming. same hit. Hey, there's the same hit. It's like yep. defense. You're always. 
Yeah. Might be a little bit more predatory. Uh, well, Mueller. so he's <laughs> here. Than, yes. Than Bennett was, but yeah, <laughs> there's a touch. I, of Mueller was always here. looking. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like, I don't yeah, think Sam Bennett was actually going. expecting it. Still, the, the hardest Kneeler hit I ever seen was was the one on Zach Boychek. You could hear the pop. Oh. I was in the rink that night. You could hear the pop of that hit. It was just bang. And Boychek's yeah. a thick guy, too. Like, Boychek's a pretty yeah, thick a, guy. He's not a little guy by any means. All right. I got, uh, I got something built for you guys. It's exciting. It's more or less for the the viewers as opposed to YouTube, but you're going to be excited before we do that. Uh, we are getting through our partner reads, uh, which is always, well, some people like to enjoy it. Um, as always our show presented by Botano, uh, go to Botano.ca, download the award-winning app. Uh, it is state of the art, the fastest, most user-friendly and, uh, advancing betting app for your mobile, mobile, mobile or tablet. The amazing world of sports always in your hand with Botano. Uh, also use bet builder and same game parlays. They also have a, a an interesting thing. If your team scores, if your NHL team scores three goals or more, you've already won. Uh, go to botano.ca and check the details for that. Remember, uh, it must be 19. Please play responsibly. Is this me? Am I got taking Renfrew? Yeah. I'll take Renfrew. I've had enough you got of it. The, uh, the, the tough read. <laughs> Renfrew Pro, the original uh, hockey tape. Uh, as Bob says, don't forget, it's hand terrible. doesn't mean it'll make your hands bad. You can just tear it easily with your hands. Moisture resistance helps with puck control. Uh, it's what the pros use, available at all major retailers. Renfrewpro.com. It is the one with the green core. Don't forget about Free Tape Fridays. Um, you can tag them on Instagram. Uh, give them a follow at Renfrewpro.com. Pro, don't forget to share your story. <laughs> share your story. Uh, as always, our friends over at BEI, Bonisher Excavating, helping to shape the Ottawa Valley. Uh, always hiring, but when you're planning your next project, consider BEI for your aggregate supply needs. You can find them at BonisherExcavating.com or give them a phone call at 613-432-1120. Um, always hiring. Free Hockey Friday, um, <laughs> if, if you work for the company, and um, please slow down at construction zones. <laughs> there, got hey, it. all right. Uh, you finally got, got 7 out of 10. Yeah, no, you nice nailed it. it. 70%, <laughs> um, perfect. All right, so gentlemen, <laughs> I, uh, you've all heard about the new chat AI and all this artificial intelligence stuff going on. Mm -hmm. I decided uh, we would give the Sens jobs that might be more relatable to them so like uh oh yeah like we'll oh. say like drake batherson is a fisherman if you will all right so uh without further ado uh let's check in uh at the lab uh with some sends ai that hat just that helmet just keeps falling you yorkie <laughs> i know got the big boiler going on there too Big uh, I, this is how I spend my day. Um, okay. So, um, <laughs> I tried three different programs to try and figure out how we could do this. So I used the same headshot, all sense headshots to, uh, generate some AI, which is by the way, a lot more difficult than it seems. Here's all right. Number one, Tim Stitzla. Uh, we made him a movie star cause he's got the good looks. Um, that seems pretty good. Uh, but Yorkie wanted him <laughs> as an ice dancer. So oh, yeah. there is <laughs> there's Tim Stutz of the ice dancer. Oh, he, he, right? I Stars on ice touring. Yeah. He, he's, he's he's charismatic. He's, over the he's, a, he's a showman. Um, like I love it. Ice dancer. Also, all day long. by the way, uh, <laughs> logos are copyrighted, so it'll always distort the logo and make it completely something different. So just keep that in mind as we go through these logos, which is why they're all messed up. Um, is that like all right, the, Alex? That's like the Oh, who's next? Oh, Batherson. <laughs> there's, there's Drake. So what is that jersey? Uh, I, so, <laughs> I will say. What's he wearing? Drake <laughs> looks like that looks like wearing... mutant pack. That's like mutant Pac-Man on there. <laughs> <laughs> that's his lucky fishing jersey. Um, the uh, Drake Batherson to make a fisherman was the hardest one I had to do. I like made sixty probably. I just couldn't. I just said please. 
a uh, guy fishing on a dock with a lighthouse in the background or off a boat, whatever. This is the best <laughs> I could get out of a fisherman. He nailed it. I wanted him as an oyster shucker. <laughs> I just see that. Ah! I just see him fucking oysters all day. That's see, I, I could just see that. You why didn't you respond to the email? Um, all right, I did, so, I, uh, I don't know. <laughs> no. Who's next? Who do we got going here? <laughs> <laughs> so Look at these jerseys, man. <laughs> York wanted, Yorkie wanted Eric Brandstrom as a jockey. So, um... <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's a little. small there we go <laughs> <laughs> that one yeah it's one of my favorites uh okay good one. uh next is that so is... <laughs> what <Brad. laughs> no it was what was you, was, Brandstrom, was that a was that was that a jockey helmet on Bradstrom? i thought no, it was like i don't the, I, <laughs> I thought that was like the it, swiss league golden helmet i thought he's like a swiss I know. league player like what's going that's on that's why here? i left it in <laughs> I'm more like, concerned. Well, I'm more concerned about the next one here because I've known Brass a long time, and that guy is not going to be professing anything. <laughs> <He's>, uh, <laughs> there's, there's no way this uh, fits or tracks. <laughs> I he was hard to make too. As a, I just said university professor, and I couldn't really get one that, and he doesn't even look like him. So, um, no, I I just close. I liked it because it looks like he has a private school jacket on. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Next. Oh. Ah, uh, yes. The injury lawyer, Patrick Brown. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Brown and Brown Associates. I can see that. It works. There you go. <laughs> yeah. He kind of looks might, like... He like, might I, look the best. Does I that look anything dad. like... I don't, I don't know who that is. <laughs> um, I played with his dad, Doug. He, look, he looks the exact same. They both they both look kind of like scholastic. They got that lawyer look about them. Yeah. I don't know. Cerebral. Especially with the glasses. Cerebral. Seems like a smart guy. Yeah, cerebral. College guy, there too. There you go. Uh, all right. <laughs> ah, yes. Yeah, this one I love. <laughs> I love this one. I Was this my Uh, yeah. Yeah. The French pastry, French pastry chef for Thomas Shabbat. Yes. Yeah, specializing, uh, yeah. specializing in one of the hardest pastries to make. And it always goes for top dollar. The macaroon. You're, the macaroon. Like a, good, a good macaroon is tough to find. Great spot here in Westboro. I get mine at. I could see Shabbat though. Macaroon I could see specialist, that. right? I, I was hoping they were going to yeah. turn his mustache a little at the end with the little French curl thing, but give yeah, give him something. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, all right, who's next? Oh yes. <laughs> I'd Who's like to wait more on this Hannibal. guy, but I don't. I don't know Hannibal. him from Adam. So I, uh, I, I, the only the only time I've ever had a interview with him was um, when he was on the show and I was out and I was listening to it live. Um, so that's my that's my entire two cents on this, but it does fit. I, I see it. Well, what so I, Jacob Chikrin eats a very healthy lifestyle. He's uh, he eats more raw things than I think we know. And so we made him a butcher, but he also, I did try to make him a farmer. It just, uh, holding a smoothie and a cow, but that didn't turn out so well. So, uh, we left it with this one. <laughs> well, I said nutritionist because this guy knows every single thing what's going on in his body. Like everything yep. he eats, it's so calculated. Like what, what, what's the thing he was eating during the year again? Was it like some, uh, was it liver was it or liver brain or something? Organ, Ooh. organ meat or yeah, something. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Like, so I thought it's going to be like, exhausting. Thought... Like I, I played in the league and I ran on red wine and espresso. <laughs> so, <laughs> this guy, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's so, going to be exhausting meanwhile, what you're doing all the time. Like, here's a guy like uh, Jake who's had some, you know, he's had some well-documented in, uh, injuries. He's had some issues. He watches everything he eats. The guy's built like a Greek God. And then you got Phil the thrill. It's like, <laughs> Phil, how you feel? I'm good. I'm good. Just give me another. Just don't want to go. Uh, the guy's burying a hot, burying a hot dog in between periods. Uh, <laughs> Never getting hurt. Hey, why is it, what's going get, on with Kessel yeah. right now? How come he's not playing? Just a healthy scratch, eh? Yeah, I, I mean, That's a, where do you put him in? That team's so know. deep, man. That team's that team's so good. Yeah. Um. Okay. Uh. Moving on from Jacob Chicken. Oh, yeah, Alex Dabrinka, the Chipotle worker. 
So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> he also looks like the guy though from uh, uh, Dexter, that TV show. He does. Yes. Yeah. Good pull. Yeah. Good pull, Wally. Ah. So, uh, Michael. Anyway, uh, Michael C. Hall. But yeah. What did I have yes. him as? Uh, you wanted him that or a movie star? Well, yeah, because if historically in Hollywood, most most leading men are like five seven. Like Tom Tom Cruise is <laughs> is really five foot four. Uh, no, it's true. Hey, you know what? Did you guys did you guys see the uh, clip of Brady drinking um, out of the the yes. water maker? Or the, yeah. Yes. So I always watch. I'm, I'm a huge golf fan, and it's amazing how often they talk about how formidable Brooks is. And then you put him next to Brady and he looks like a little guy, doesn't he? Yes. Yeah, I noticed yes. that. They Tiny. always say Will, that. Uh, always like, yeah, you know, he's a specimen. He's this and that. And then you stand him next to Brady and you're like, no, he's not. <laughs> you know, we'll, uh, maybe, uh, we'll discuss yeah. that after. Cause, uh, people have opinions on Brady particularly about this. So we'll get to that in a second. Yeah. Uh, all right. All right. Who's next? Oh yes, Anton Forsberg, the construction worker. Yep, that fits. puts in a hard days. puts in a hard day's work. He's at Christmas Day. He's uh he's at the rink riding the bike. This guy is a known worker. Gets up at six, puts in a hard day's work at the construction site. Gets the boots on. I for sure is a construction worker all day long. I agree. I see it all day. Could have been a miner too. Yep. Yep. Yeah, it does look. It's a good picture. Uh, okay. Pa paver. Uh, paver. <laughs> just a just a blue collar worker. Ah, oh, yes, Claude Giroux, the financial advisor. Why, Yorkie? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I look at him, a guy. He's always giving sound advice to his teammates. He's keeping everybody even keel. You're gonna have your ups and downs, just like the market. And you know, you you can't you can't uh, you can't have um, you can't lose your wit about you and sell everything. This guy is. I think he'd be a great financial advisor because uh, he's very wise. He's very wise. One of the smartest and, guys on the ice. So I see him as being one of the smartest guys in the market. He also helps get people paid. There is that. Right? Yeah. You, yeah. yeah. You, play with, you, you play with Claude, you're, you're getting paid. Yes. Kind of like I the did stoner. try to kind do. Like... <clears throat> I did have him as a bank manager with cash in front. It never came out as good. So. Uh, we, uh, I went this is this. what we settled on. <laughs> this is... Yeah, that's, I couldn't, <laughs> th I couldn't get a good Claude Giroux look. Anyway, this is as good as it gets. Uh, okay. Nice. Next. <laughs> one of my favorites. <laughs> that's a Nick good one. Holden, the party planner. <laughs> Listen, he's got such a great personality that if there's something that needs that's to be me. planned, I think Nick Holden can do it. Sweet. So you never guy. know that. Yeah, you would never know that if if you watch how he plays, and you would just wouldn't think this about Holden Bay. That's good to know. Good to know. Yeah. He's he's solid. And this, you know what? Yeah. A bachelor party. I think Nick Holden can plan it. Uh, all right. Uh, next. Ah, uh, yes, Matthew Joseph, based uh, as a yacht captain. Uh, this is based on him riding the jet ski during his Stanley Cup parade. Oh, oh I could. God. I could see him fitting in well in St. Bart's too. After being down there, like it's he looks like he's pretty slick, like in a French island yeah. too. The, the native tongue in uh, St. Bart's is is French. A lot of yachts in there too, rolling in. Perfect spot for Joseph St. Bart's yacht captain. That's awesome. Oh, that's <laughs> or so I could have put him, I suppose, in a rubber dinghy. But I thought yacht captain. He he would he would clean up nice. Uh, okay, <laughs> next. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, Yorkie, <laughs> explain to me why why Mark Mastelik is an arborist. Well, look at him. He looks like he's right out of the bush. Like, he looks like a guy that knows a good... He looks like a guy that knows his trees. Like, he, he probably knows the difference, the different species. You know, he, he, I've dealt with arborists, and they look like Mark Kastelik. At my cottage, I had to get about... I had to get about 30 trees cut down, the guy that showed up. Look just like Mark Castelic. And there's a certain look. Like, look at him. He looks like a guy that he does uh, have a touch of it. Yeah. 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 He's outdoorsy, probably knows his trees and uh, probably a little bit knows about the environment. So, yeah, that's why he's an arborist. Okay. 
Uh, it, it works. Fair, fair. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, next. Oh, yes. Tyler Clevin, the train engineer for K-Train. This is one of my, I like this one. He looks about 10 years old there. <laughs> well, look at his, look at his headshot. You nailed it. <laughs> it's like, all is he based a little kid? Is, he, is he a little the kid that's getting the ride? Getting his parents took him for a train ride or something at Christmas time. Like, what's going on here? <laughs> this is from Does the Polar at... Express. It's exactly. <laughs> well, well, he is pretty young. What is what is Clevin? How old is he? 19, 20? 20, 22, isn't he? 20. Oh, he's is he? Man, oh, like yeah. He's 12. He's, yes. No. So he's because he's a star. Uh, the Polar he's Express. 21. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, because he did two years, didn't he? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, next, ah, uh, Josh Norris, the kindergarten teacher. When you sent this email, I thought that was so fitting for him. I, I could just see him <laughs> uh, absolutely doing it. Absolutely, yeah. uh, being a teacher. I could okay. see it all day. That's not Josh's body, eh? Because if it is, he needs to. He needs to get a few crunches in. <laughs> it's it's his summer bod. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know Josh had a dad bod. Like what's going on? What, I can only speak for myself, but that's what I look like every May. <laughs> this is this is what if he wasn't an NHL player, he would so he wouldn't have to worry about the dad bod. But uh, Josh Norris is a kindergarten teacher. Is uh, I think Why? so fitting. Explain that one. Explain that one to me. Because he's explain he's yourself. Such a nice guy. That's very calm, low key, uh, even yeah. keel. I think he's just a really good guy. That I he would be a great teacher. Kindergarten, though. Yeah, has I to be kindergarten. Oh, I, I think he's good with the kids. <laughs> good with the kids. Yep. Uh, okay. Darth Chewy I'm agrees. On one. Honestly, makes sense. Um, <laughs> there we go. All right. So, uh, who's next? Uh, Shane Pinto, the dog walker. <laughs> um, <laughs> he, <laughs> he is a That's huge a very, dog very fan. Very particular set of skills. Yeah. Uh, so I even reached out to, I was talking to Mendez about something. I was like, Hey, I need some help with Shane Pinto. And he's like, honestly, anything with dogs. So I gave him a dog walker job. Dog walker, dog groomer. It's always tough yep. to find a good yep. dog pet, groomer if, if you're a dog. Yep. Pet store owner. Anyway. Yep. Yeah. Uh, that's Shane Pinto. Uh, all right. Next. I think we're almost done. Oh. I was going to say, how many more players are on this team? Uh, there's uh. 82. Um, this is uh, Jake Sanderson as a courier. I tried to do mailman because Yorkie, you had said, hey, always delivering the mail. But I couldn't get one that was like, I was like delivering mail in the neighborhood or at a house. I couldn't get anything as good. So I went with courier and this is what we got. Okay, focus uh, back in there on focus back in. Is like he, Harry, you, you know what Harry else he could, you know what else he could be? He could be Nicholas. He could be Nick Cage's stunt double. Like, yep. look at his—he looks just like Nicholas Cage. <laughs> yep. yep. Same head shape. <laughs> he uh, hopefully in one of his good movies and not all the bad ones he's done. But yeah, right. Face Off was Face exactly. Off was tremendous. Loved Face Off. Face that was off Water was World. <laughs> water. <laughs> that almost this ended not- Kevin Costner. Yeah. Was Cage in, was true. Cage in water? Cage wasn't in Waterworld, was no, it? No, I got the guy. I got the guys mixed up there for a second. Yeah, but, cross, yeah, what a bad movie. That's okay. It, it wouldn't shock me if he agreed to do it anyway, though. Uh, okay, uh, who's next? Oh yes, Austin Watson, the lumberjack. Yeah. <laughs> okay, just look at the picture, and it's like, come on, what else is he? Lumberjack, for right? Sure. He's a lumberjack, no question. Yeah. Uh, next. I don't know. Oh, okay, so we're down to the final three. So Brady Kachuk is clearly a general, a leader. I think special forces commander. Here's uh, this is Brady Kachuk, and I did this. Uh, he had a couple of good ones, so we left a couple of them in. Yeah, well, it's he, he, or very it. easily. Yeah, it, very easily it could be a JDF guy too. Here, like you go in and you land in overseas, you do one of those secret missions, and you just kick ass like. <laughs> That's that's pretty Kachuk yep. right there. Oh, there's another good one, yeah. No. Yeah, yeah. I like that yes. one. I'm on board good. for that. 
So, uh, and finally, our last one is Artem Zub. And why not? So, uh, Artem Zub is the international man of mystery. Because I don't know what he would do. <laughs> I had him I as no a idea. spy, but but I thought... I he just, that, yeah, he I just thought you were a spy, but yeah. Yeah, I, I couldn't get one that was good enough. And then I didn't want the KGB to track me down. So, I went with uh, international man of mystery. <laughs> That's good. I like it. Very well. Well, okay. well done. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> uh, do uh, Alex will get out of this when you play the opening one more time. Or, I guess call it the <laughs> There we go. <laughs> they, by the way, the robot's name is Sensory. In case uh, you can't zoom in far enough. Sensory. Get it? Like it. Sensory. Okay. I got, I get uh, it. I get it. That. Uh, it's our first edition of Sends in AI. Uh, as we as we play around, listen. If you have um, if you have requests, just uh, send them to the show and uh, or reach out to me uh, on Twitter or whatever, and we'll uh, put another episode together. Because you could tell uh, Bobby and Yorkie were thoroughly enjoyed by that. And if you have yeah. children that, and if you have children in high school that are mysteriously getting nineties instead of sixties, they're probably using AI right now to write their papers. It gets probably. crazy. <laughs> Type, yes. You, type, you, yes, you type in something and it will write it for you. And you put in, I want to get an A, really? a B, or a C. Oh, it's Bob, it's crazy. Crazy. Yes. Yeah. But there are now programs out that can detect it. Well, oh. so anyway. I said, yeah. I uh, okay, I want to get back. Cool. <laughs> it didn't make it to Owen Sound. Um, <laughs> no. the, uh, there was some. Uh, Brady Kachuk was enjoying, obviously, cheering on his brother, drinking out of the Wanamaker Trophy. And it, it's same thing with last year when he was celebrating in Calgary, uh, two-fisting some uh, Budweiser's. Listen, let him have fun. Why do we? Why is this even a debate? I don't understand. Is there anybody that cares that Brady Kachuk is hey, – there's some people on Twitter that are, I don't want to see Aww. him doing it. Um, Aww, get, let him have fun. Yeah. I don't understand. I mean – that's your I, brother. I <clears throat> Did you? Your brother and on top of that, that's the Wanamaker. Like, if you get a chance to Bob, drink out you... of that with the major champion of the year, you're probably going to, right? <laughs> so, oh, um, it just happens to be on camera, right? Let him have, let him have a good time. He, I thought last year in Calgary, it was a little excessive. I don't think he's actively seeking it out like he did, right? I think he's actually tried to be inconspicuous about it. Yep. Um but he's, yep. but he's, you know, he's Brady Kachuk. He's, he's the camera's gonna find him. Yeah, I, uh, I love it. I have, did you, I did, did you guys hear? Did you guys hear Barkov after the game talking about the success of the Florida Panthers and about? He was asked about Matthew Kachuk, and the one thing he said about him was, "It's yeah, he's great on the ice, but he talked about it off the ice. He goes, the team's always together. Guys are doing stuff. Guys are going out. That's what the Kachuks do. They." They, mm -hmm. they make they they make yeah. you closer so i you know what i like it it's not like he's there like he's taking a chug out of the out of the out of the trophy it's it's awesome one thing i wish i would have done bob when i played take advantage of more opportunities you have instead of sitting in the hotel room like get out enjoy yourself like you're playing in the nhl yeah. um as long as you don't go right. overboard enjoy the opportunities that come your way because yes. um you know you're only young once yeah. right uh, Absolutely. And can I just want to give props to him because last year he turned that Calgary stuff into a full on deal with Budweiser. So he got paid. Yeah. So, hey, cool. yeah. and that's, I will say before, and I'm going to go off topic here. Um, you, you see Mitch Marner, Austin Matthews, Jason Spezza, even uh, William Nylander, all these Leaf guys are getting national exposure on commercials, and you don't see anybody. And Connor McDavid's another one. You don't see anybody from Ottawa ever getting even any local deals except for car dealerships. Like I think that's an issue in Ottawa that they they don't use or try to market with the Sens players, and I, I think it affects them because that that's money that they could yeah. be making. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, mm -hmm. If I had to watch the the Chris Neal um, auto change oh, oil, oil changers. Um, the oil chain. Oh my goodness. That <laughs> was such a tough commercial. <laughs> we used to play that for all the time. <laughs> I, that's it. There's nothing there. And like, yeah, yeah, nobody, there's so much opportunity there that kind of goes lacking. I would agree. Yeah. I, when I was like doing, Jason. when I was doing, 
when I was doing radio for while Neeler was doing those commercials, I only referred to him as oil changers. <laughs> <That's not laughs> <what's his name>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, like Jason Spezza was a retired player and still getting yeah. national commercials. Brady Kachuk should be everywhere <laughs> to me. I think uh, I think yeah. though well, I think the, I think Wally things are gonna things are gonna change though because more advertising is taking place through social media um, and then if you got guys like this that are out doing stuff it's I think I think things are gonna change drastically with new ownership there's gonna be more things coming guys ways and more, it's just gonna be more yeah. of a beefed up it's gonna be more things to happening in Ottawa for these players I, I truly believe that because there's too many guys with great personalities. Yeah. Hopefully, I agree. Hopefully. Um, finally, before we move on to send spelling bee, which you guys are eagerly awaiting, I know, is mm-hmm. uh, they touch the Prince of Wales trophy. Uh, I wish this would stop being a big discussion. I, I hope you I don't know why you wouldn't touch it. Uh, would yeah. you guys touch the Prince of Wales trophy if you want it? Or the cow, I guess. I, I mean, I would. You earned it, right? You earned the right to touch it when you win it. Um I don't get the super i'm not a superstitious person i never really was um in in how i approach the game by any means but i you already won it right it's like it's it's yours to carry off the ice i think you're supposed to and it's just me though yeah yeah but well, colorado did colorado did the same thing i think colorado touched it after they all went in a lot more picture. teams have lately yeah, yeah it's yeah if you're like maybe you have a couple of guys on the team that don't want it, but fine. I, I like what happened last night. Guys went over, had a pitcher, held it, didn't didn't parade it around very much, and then just went off the ice. Hey, like come on, whether you touch exactly. it or not, it's Be not happy. gonna it's not gonna it's, it's not gonna have any relevance if, if you win the Stanley Cup or not. Like, yeah, um, yeah. Be happy. You're one of- I, I <clears throat> it was perfect. I was perfect what the Florida Panthers did. You're one of two teams left in the National Hockey League. Regardless if you win the Stanley Cup or not, you've got to be happy with how that season played out, minus the you'll be crushed for a bit. But when you look back at the general idea of it, that's a pretty good season. Like there are, what, 30 yeah. other teams, 31 other teams that would trade with you. 30. Yeah, 30. 100%. Yeah, yeah 100%. So, uh, all right. Uh uh, Alex, uh, time to fire it up. We're going to do uh, All right. send spelling me. Put your phone down, Yorkie. You can't see it, it's can you? It's time for send spelling me, <laughs> where the contestants try and spell the names of oh. Ottawa Senators players. <laughs> so good. So, um,. We are only going to do two names today because last time you did three and all three were wrong by both of you. So we'll see if one of you can get on the board here. Um, we'll start uh, with Yorkie. Uh, you're going to get to spell the first guy that we have up today, Peter Schatzlevy. Uh Peter played oh, 107 he's... games from 99 to 2004. He would have been a teammate of yours, Yorkie. Um, he scored 38 points in his 107 games. So... Without further ado, can you spell Schatzlevy? Yeah, he was pretty talented, too. I remember Peter. Great player. Um, no idea how to spell his name, and I'm having a hard time finding it on my phone. So, yeah, uh, no, hey. uh, so it's obviously, I'm not going to say obviously, S. Uh, C. Bobby, are you on your phone? Eight. Or H. Uh, yeah, but not for that. <laughs> A. Okay. <laughs> e. I don't trust either one of you at this point. Oh, okay. T. <laughs> Shots. Uh, leave it. S. Do we have an S? L. <laughs> uh, There's only so many letters here. All right, Shots, no, leave uh, I <laughs> E V A. Oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> Shatslieva. Okay, uh, 
I'm just gonna. Uh, I'll just tell you now, Yorkie. I don't believe that to be correct. Uh, Bobby, uh, are you sure? You double start? check it. Double double check it. <laughs> so, I went. Uh, yeah. I have it written down here. S C H A T S. Um. L E E V A. No, that's Evia. That's Lev. <laughs> I have E E V Y here. E V A. Yeah, not A. Sorry, Y. Oh, you want to end in a V Y? Okay, that's not bad. Alex, show them how wrong they are. Oh, oh, that actually sounds exactly the way it should. Shats, Libby. Yeah, Bobby, off by a letter, I think. The E for an I. I thought there we had to go. use Not all bad. the boxes. I thought we had to use all the boxes. No, no, it's just <laughs> a standard why, that's number why I of kept boxes. Going. No, no. If I tell you no, to spell borrow, it's not twelve letters. Well, that's why I kept going. No, <laughs> I would have. Listen, I the number of boxes does not matter. At well, the that should have been okay? that should have been disclosed before the spelling spelling bee. It's like Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> When they when they Listen, put up the things, you know there's that many letters. What are you running okay. here, anyhow? From now on, <laughs> there are that many boxes for every name. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, let's Ooh, go to number on. two, shall we? Um, Bobby's first this time. Right. Yeah. Okay. It's another Yorkie teammate, Curtis Lecision. Oh. Uh, he played from 2000 um, to 04 for the Ottawa Senators. 200 games, 26 wow. points. And more an A. He is an outstanding individual. Curtis Lecision. Bobby. I'm looking at what I wrote <laughs> down here, and I know it's not right, but um, I'm going to go with L E S C H I A N. No, L E S C H uh, Y. <laughs> Yeah, Chia. C H I A N. That's my guess. Lecision. <laughs> Not even close to that. <laughs> I know this like one. <laughs> oh, do you? Are uh, we going to have our I first correct spelling? I wrote it down too. Uh, L E S C H. Y S. Okay, hang on. L E H Y S. H Y N. Well, Alex, show them they finally got it right. Congratulations, yeah. Jason York. Nailed it. On, <laughs> on getting the well first of our names correct. That's One of we're the five. same age, I think. I think we're a year Nailed apart. It. I that was always a tough one for me early on too. Uh, probably when he played here, I couldn't get it right. That's tough. Aaron Curtis Ward. Lecession. Aaron Ward's good at saying that name. Remember Wardle's story yes. about Lecession? That's <laughs> that's why I put it in today. That's all I can think of is Curtis Lecession. Yeah. yeah. So great, great guy. Uh, well, great, uh, gr- great guy, and uh, always in phenomenal shape. Like unbelievable shape. He was. He was a bike racer after his career yes. well, during but after his career he was racing bikes yeah and now yeah, i think he owns yeah. a farm mm-hmm. i think he's a farmer out west like a horse rancher uh, <clears throat> yeah awesome guy is he canadian guy yeah yep it's from out west yeah, yeah. like Sask- saskatchewan boy or alberta one of the two yeah he's such a good guy that that i'm not even mad at him for like replacing me because <laughs> he came in he came in and we were the two quote-unquote older defensemen and they kept him and i went somewhere else so that's how nice that guy is yeah move me out we can uh, move on from this and spelling bee but curtis lecision he uh the lockout in 0405 ended his career because yep. he never played after the uh, 0304 season huh. should have ended mine too <laughs> i had no business playing after that <laughs> take the money yorkie what are you talking about 
because <laughs> I, I can't even walk anymore. I, you got to know, you got to know when your body's had enough. You just got to yep. know. Doesn't the paycheck and, help? No, I. Uh, well, yeah, money's great, but so so too is golfing when you're uh, done playing. That's uh, much more enjoyable. It's much more enjoyable when you don't have to get the old knee drained every two weeks. Ugh. Yeah. I was, you, ever get, you ever get? You ever get? You ever get? Did you ever get I something drained? By? No. Oh, no. Avoided yeah. all that. No. I have arthritic hands. <laughs> it's a lot yeah. of fun. <laughs> so the, the weather's not good. I really can't get out there on the course, but uh, yeah, I, I picked the kids up and nothing got drained, so I'm good. Hey, cold, cold, cold day. You must just dread. Eh? You hit the ball and you just hit it on that wrong yeah, spot. Do it. Right, yeah. right through the fingers. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, it's got to be perfect. Does the weather time. affect? Does the yeah, weather does, affect yeah. your hands? Yeah. 100%. Yeah. If, yeah. It's, if it's cold out, it's a miserable day. I have no, yeah, I have no blood flow the... in five fingers. So. Really? Yeah. So yeah. Uh, can you tell, like, this is going to sound stupid. Can you tell when the weather's about to change based on how, like, your hands feel? <laughs> Put the um, finger up. No, I guess I wouldn't say that. No. <laughs> no. Completely, yeah. <laughs> Completely uh, rea reactive. <laughs> Reactive hands, uh, not proactive. <laughs> <laughs> Bob's going to rain hold a sec. Hold on. There's, a, yeah. There's El Nino rolling in. <laughs> okay, fine. Um, the uh, last thing, uh, Vegas plays tonight. Oh, the Jamie Benn suspension. Are you yeah. surprised He's... he got two games for trying to behead Mark Stone? <laughs> Honestly, I thought it was a... I, I thought two is a little steep. Um, yeah, me too. I, really? I thought it was a little steep. I thought it was maybe a game, if that. Um, I, obviously, I think it looked worse than it was, for one. So optically, you kind of have to suspend them. But I didn't. It's not a hockey play by any means. But it was. Uh, I don't think it's a two gamer. That's that's just me. Well, he missed one full game pretty well for getting kicked out yep. of that one game. So right. basically. I, I would have been fine with one. And Pet, like I looked at the, the Petrangelo slash. He got one game for that. And same thing, you're, you're using your stick in a violent matter. So I, I thought the precedent was set with the one for Petrangelo, one for Ben. I thought a little excessive. At the end of the day, it's not going to matter. Um, no. But I don't know. It's, it's, I didn't like it either. I thought, I thought one, one would have been good as well. Uh, does How about I just look at it? How about his excuse? He's like, I was falling and uh, I was trying to break my fall. Come on. Yeah. He, 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 like, it. just come out and say you did it, you know? <laughs> like, um, <laughs> But I always look at it this way, and I don't know if it correlates for everybody, but I think one playoff game is equivalent of four or five for me. Yeah, so, that's what I've heard um, before. That's, that, yeah, that's the way I look at it, it's, and I think two games is, is – it's not a 10-game suspension, right? It wouldn't be during the regular season. I just, it's it's – right. So, Wally, it's the same thing. Like, yeah. we haven't even talked about this. Like, the suspensions are one thing. But how the hell do they call that penalty at the end of the game on stall? Like, what a horrific call. 200 yeah. feet from the net. Like, if I, was, if I was a forward right now and we were down in a game and I was trying to get a power play, I would skate at defenseman's sticks and fall over. Because yeah, that's what guys are doing. Like, you're seeing a bunch of guys. I think Burns was earlier. I don't know if it was last game or the game before. Someone was coming out on Burns. Sticks on the ice. On the ice. He never moves it. Yep. The forward the forward cut across him and tripped over his stick. Like, hey, it's yep. the NHL. If you can't friggin' stand up, like, he's not intentionally trying to trip the player. The player fell over his stick. So, I don't, it's way too ticky-tacky for me. Like, come on. Like, it's just ridiculous. Yeah, I, 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 I hated that call last night. Just a horrendous call. I did too. Yeah. So if it's the middle of the second period, are you okay with it? I'm not okay with it ever. It's the NHL. Yeah. Guys are too good as skaters to be falling like this. Guys are smart. Guys are smart. Like It's like you, you know if you fall over a guy's stick, you're going to draw a penalty now, and it's ridiculous. Like It's the playoffs, yeah. man. All right. Uh, I will say, though, it's not the reason they lost. No, no, no. It's not the no, reason. No, no, no. 
Like they but, they shouldn't no, have probably been down three nothing and trying to win that game late in the game, right? Oh, so they couldn't yes. score anyway. Um, the back to the Jamie Ben thing for a sec. Uh, I does he get the extra game because he it's a he, the equivalent of a headshot, right? It's the stick up in the neck that they're trying to say, oh, we want to protect the players, sort of. I hate to Probably. hate to bring Bobby I mean, into this because for those who don't know, George Peros is a, a buddy of yours, and so yeah. Um, yeah. I don't want him knocking on yeah. your door, going, "Hey, I didn't like what you said." No, no, no. Uh, he knows. He knows I'm I'm playing it very, very uh, professionally, but I I just don't. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't see. I just don't see a two gamer there. Um, but I think optically, because of the way it present, it I, it just. Yeah. I mean, York, you can you can. Like I don't even know that he made direct contact yeah, with the head like, either. Like, kind yeah. of rode up into the ne- into the neck area. Yeah, I mean, I think... Stoner was back, you know, after one shift, right? So it just, I don't know. I, I think optically they had to make a decision on it, and I just don't know if it was the right one. But that's just me. It it looked it looked bad, but when you watched it, it still was bad. Um, also, too, a uh, Ben's, and I've never I've never been suspended. I've never had to do something like that. So. I'm wondering if when you have your hearing and you're talking on the phone, because you have a chance to say why you did it, what you were seeing. And to your point, Bob, maybe if Ben just says, you know what? Yeah, I made a mistake. I did this. Maybe he gets a game instead of instead of like pretending you didn't try to do it. (laughs) <laughs> like, I, I, right it's yeah, like because that, that video is like, not going to help them if they slow that down in <laughs> in real time by any means so it's like, it's yeah like, i would it's agree like with you say, probably should have said i get it yeah. like i don't know like if it seems if repent your sins tell the truth and we will give justice on you, you oh no you, you don't think you did anything wrong so we do so game. now we're going to give you an next here's another game for you so uh, and he's <laughs> Yeah, he's 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 done something like that before too. He's where he's he's come down on yep. uh, guys' heads like that. Like it's it's happened before, so maybe that has something to, to do with Larkin. it too. Yeah, I was, I was that's right. The Red Wings. That's right. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, and so, I think uh, that was worse than this. It was. I'm gonna try and jog your memory, Bobby. Uh, people have brought it up in the chat. Uh, I for, forgive me. It's uh, Young Zachary '96. By the way, today in 2017. Uh, you and the Ottawa Senators played your final playoff game. Well, the Sens haven't played a playoff game since. This was game oh, wow. seven of the Eastern Conference final. I know you like to be reminded of this. Um, there was yeah. a penalty to uh, Dion Phaneuf in that game, which uh, two minutes for interference in the third period. I don't remember it, but in the chat, people do about uh, that call. Do you remember it? No, is that the one on Brian Rust? The, no, because I don't think he got a penalty for that. Um, no, I can't remember it at all. Okay. I was yeah, a little I bit. can't either, which is why I, I was lenient to bring it up. But uh, there was a yeah. – anyway, there was not very many penalties in that game. Uh, three. No, it was a clean game, actually. That was – it was a very – yeah, that was, that was a very a, clean game seven. That's for sure. That's the only uh, – by the way, they scored uh, – Justin Schultz scored – uh, on that penalty, uh, to give uh, Pittsburgh oh. a two-one lead at that point, and then Zinger tied it up, and then uh, something else happened later. At the, something else happened later in the game. We don't want to talk about. So, um, <laughs> uh, interesting that it uh, that was today. I knew it was coming up. I just didn't remember it was today. Um, Gosh, yeah. What? Uh, so, I, I did think of this the other day, though. What was the plane ride back from Pittsburgh at the end of that game? Um, did we fly out that night or the next morning? I think we flew right home that night. Yeah. Cause we had been traveling the morning after for the most part during the playoffs, but it was kind of one of those ones. If you, whether you won or lost, you were going home. Right. Cause I think we had home ice advantage and over Nashville. If I and remember I, but I think the cup was going to start right away too. Cause it was game seven. It so was. You got like a, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I I don't remember the plane ride home. Um, it, it's funny because you, I mean, New Yorker, you've been down. You know how it goes. You're you're let down and you're really upset, but at the same time, there's like this high that you come off of as well. 
um, just from the ride, right. From being on the playoff ride. So we kind of, I, I remember we all kind of let our hair down and played cards and, and hung out. Cause it's like how, I mean, you can dwell on it. Right. But at the same time, it's your last yeah. night with your teammates too. So, uh, it was a, yeah, it was a quick turnaround. It was, it was, we were, we had some beers on that flight. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Cause you feel uh, like you feel like when you lose like that, especially going that far, you're disappointed, but it's like, you knew you, you know, deep down, you did everything you could. And sometimes yeah. it just doesn't, it's like, it's, a, it's, a, I don't know. It's tough. It's tough to explain to people that don't lose like that, but yeah, you're right. When, when it does end, you're like this whole, your body just, you just kind of let everything go, man. But that's uh yeah, man, it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy how close you guys were though with, with that team, like yeah. that close when it just goes to show you like kind of similar to what Florida's doing this year. Right. Like, Nobody expected it. Yep. Very similar. Very similar. Yep. Except, except they got, they scored the last goal. <laughs> we didn't. <laughs> yeah. uh, there was a question yeah. from uh, the great Johnny Bobby. Who was the most devastated on the team? Oh, I think it was Clark MacArthur for sure. Um, Cause I think he probably, well, I mean, didn't probably know he knew his career was over. Right. Um, I don't think people realize how much money he left on the table to come back because there was an insurance payout that was there for him. And he wiped it to play because he wanted one last, um, one last run. So I think he was probably the most devastated because I remember sitting right next to him in the locker room. And then um, I actually remember actively thinking it sucks to see a guy that you know is no longer going to play in the league. That's, you know, young, still a good player, but just can't physically do it. So um, I think we were all heartbroken for him on that one uh he was is, is he one of the most liked genuinely guys you've been around on our team yeah yeah he's certainly up there um you know zach smith's another guy that um kind of rings that bell but yeah he, he clark he was universally liked that's for sure by yeah you know it's it's one thing when your players do it but the staff does as well as like literally every single person who has a good thing to say about clark mccarthy that Boston series winner, uh, what's the feeling like around that team? That was, <laughs> you he... remember, do you guys ever see the picture that got the, the fans giving us all the finger <laughs> when we were celebrating? Yes. <laughs> There's like, yes. Yeah, it was incredible. <laughs> Cause I remember Clarkie skated, like, you know, I, I assisted on the goal obviously, but Clarkie skating right over to that. And I remember, you know, kind of coming up behind them and that guy just giving the double barrel birds <laughs> to, to all of us. That was incredible. Yeah. It was so good. It was so good. Well, that's, uh, that's one that I want to print out and put on canvas. That's for sure. <laughs> do, do people still give the finger anymore? Is that a thing? Yes. Like when's the last, do you not remember in, time in Montreal like, last time? this season, uh, Tim Stutzla scores and, or is it Brady scores and Stutzla's coming over and the guy's giving the two, the two fingers yeah. salute to them. It's a great yeah. picture. Like I, Wally I and Brady, or no, Stutz was looking right at him. Well, if you're cruising around <clears throat> Stittsville and someone cuts you off, or is your first instinct, yeah. you, you, are they getting the bird from you? No. No. No? What are you doing? I don't think I've you got a long, I, I, you got a long view. I just think, I just, well, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I don't. Yeah. But I think, uh, one, I'm scared Take that back. people might recognize me and say something like, oh, I, Bro, Wallace is flipping people off. And two, I just think the I, I think the middle finger is pointless. So I'll lay on yeah. the horn. Yeah. A long sure. time ago a long time ago there was the double finger meant something too, right? The pinky and the uh I think it was this one. <laughs> you, you did that. <laughs> long time ago. You got me. I'm I'm too i I'm soft and I love everybody, so I don't know. <laughs> no, <come laughs> on, now you're lying. Now you're now you're lying. <laughs> i don't get uh yeah i go straight to this one <laughs> i hang a i hang a full arm out the window <laughs> See? down here in nashville it just doesn't do it any good though i have a ton no, of car pet people anywhere. on the road don't know how to drive i don't understand we that should do be. everybody should have to do a driver's test like every five years when you come here's one of my biggest pet peeves you're at a four-way light. So you know that the light is going to change and you're going to be able to go. People that turn uh, right on red, which is fine, 
but they do it as the car is coming. Like they feel they need to get ahead of you. Just, just they got to beat one car, and so they cut you off to make a right hand turn. Like while well, you're making the left. Like, you, no, just I'm coming up the road and they're turning right into me. Like I just yeah. wait for your light to change. At the, what do you got to wait? Forty seconds. <laughs> anyway, that one always bugs me. But I got a few. <laughs> I'll tell you a Boston. This was a Bo this was a Boston thing. When I lived in Boston, anytime you came to a stoplight, so you were going straight and the guy across was turning, that guy would jump the light or gal and turn before the light. Like they'd time it, like it turn right in front of you. Like every time. Like I swear to God, it's a Boston thing. Very aggressive city. Well, yes, I just came through yeah. Philadelphia. And nobody seems to have a bumper without a mark on it. Oh, Anglin's angry there. <laughs> yeah, true. You're in my stomping grounds there. That's very true. Yeah, <laughs> I drove. Uh, I drove my kid down Broad. We toured from the the rink stadium, and I said, "This is the parade route as we go into Philly." And nobody's bumper was clean, intact. Not one. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, it was wild. Anyway, that sounds uh, about right. Good old Philly. Uh, okay, gentlemen, we will uh, see you on Monday. We have guests lined up for next week. I'm just going to hold off in case anything happens. But uh, Monday, we will chat again, shall we? Sounds good. See you, good see you boys. Soon. Have a good one. Thanks for watching, everybody. Coming in hot is brought to you by botano.ca. Please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel to never miss an episode.